Welcome to the podcast where passion and purpose collide. We are on a mission to interview women and the occasional token man about how their passion and purpose have collided to create healthy relationships and profitable businesses. I'm Elizabeth Denham here with Rebecca Manet. We are the co-founders of The Coterie and the co-publishers of the Franchise Woman magazine. So Rebecca, how goes it? Happy Wednesday. What, what happened to this week? It's gone by so fast. I don't know. I don't know. It was Monday yesterday. <laughs> it was Monday yesterday. Now, the good news about Wednesday is it's hump day, happy hour day. It is. It is a very exciting thing. And I might even have some wine tonight. <laughs> I'm debating how, how far do I crash my little Whole30 diet? Uh, yeah, that's a tough one, especially since you've been so good. Especially, yeah, but... I'll see. I'll see how the rest of my day goes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I have to do it after a snap decision. (laughs) (laughs) So what are what are your rose and thorn for this week? You know, it's so funny, Elizabeth. I know we do this every week. I need to just have a little flip notebook when something ucky happens. I need to write it down and something brilliant happens. I need to write it down because all of a sudden we get to the show and I'm going, uh, Rose Thorn, what what just happened? Mm -hmm. But I can tell you what happened uh, on Monday that was a thorn. So I don't like shoes and and Uh I am 90% of the time barefoot unless I gotta go outside. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the house is in kind of this remodel stage. So I'm tromping through the house, um, hurrying to get to a, a class I'm teaching Uh, via, of course, Zoom, Mm -hmm. and um, I'm tromping through the house, and all of a sudden, I step on something, and I'm thinking it's just a piece of debris, wood, whatever it is, right, Right? but ouch, does that thing hurt, so I'm kind of hobbling along to get my bottle of water, get to class, do my thing, and all of a sudden, I see this trail of blood all the way down the hall, all the way into the kitchen, down the entryway into my living room, which is where you're seeing me right now. And I am bleeding like a stuffed pig. It turns out, and I, I rub the bottom of my foot. It's a piece of glass. It's just severed the bottom of my foot and I can't get it out. I mean, I can't get it out. I'm getting into class. I'm bleeding all over the place (laughs) and I can't get it. So I'm trying to pick, I I don't have fingernails as you can see. Uh So I can't get it out. So this silly thing is like bleeding, like, like ridiculousness until I can stop at some natural break to go get a pair of tweezers to pull this silly thing out. In the meantime, I am teaching a class (laughs) in a pool of blood and trying to stay (laughs) Talk about multitasking, right? That is multitasking and got to be distracting because you're wondering, did you have like a towel or something that you wrapped it in so you weren't bleeding at your desk? No, death? because I didn't think, I just thought I stepped on something that was hard and oh, I no. hurt. I didn't realize I was bleeding until I sat down in front of the camera. And then I got, you know, dozens of people in a class. I'm not like, a, excuse me while I, you know, call, call the paramedics. I mean, I didn't know what to do. So... Fortunately, I have hardwood floors, actually those beautiful vinyl floors. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like it was on carpet. So hallelujah for that, right? (laughs) So you could just sponge up the pool of blood or towel it off or something. Right, and pull out the chunk of glass that was stuck in my foot. (laughs) This is not good. This is not a, I I don't love your thorn this week. Literally a thorn. Yeah, literally it was a glass thorn. So my rose, uh, as you know, I live on a golf course, hole number six, right out the window right there. And it's been gorgeous. It's been in the 50s here. So I'm getting to watch people uh, golf and be out in the sunshine, making new neighbors, you know. And uh, so that to me is, I, I love the idea that people are out there doing something physical and active and enjoying their day. Now I'm envious, but that's a thorn. We're talking about a rose right now. So, (laughs) so I like that they're out there doing fun stuff and that it's uh, warm enough that they can do so uh, the first week of February. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of nice. Although here that's not uncommon. 
I know. We're out, I'm in Arkansas outside here mostly. Life is different here. Yeah. I mean, that would, I would definitely be excited about that. Seeing, yeah. some people, seeing some humans outside. <laughs> seeing humans right outside my window. They're a little distracting, especially if they're good looking, but you know. <laughs> That's, that's a whole other thorn. We that's a whole about. different story. We'll talk I mean, about that another time. I think it's a whole other rose, yeah. Another story, right? Window shopping with the golfers. As I'm shopping for a husband. That's <laughs> what uh, a husband for me, not somebody else's husband. A husband for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could get thorny. I mean, you're just that all over the really place thorny. today. Uh-uh, we're not going there. <laughs> so how about your rose and thorn this week? Well been going by so quickly I've had the same problem it's hard to to figure out exactly what has happened this week really um but I think my rose is uh my friend Allison came over yes last night we um have chairs in our bedroom that are on opposite sides of the wall so every now and then she'll come and we'll sit in there away from the rest of the family because we're trying to be careful um but we just had a great conversation I mean when you find that person I haven't you know, Alabama has been a weird place for me in terms of finding a social connection and, and, you know, moving away from my hometown eight years ago, it's just been a lot of ups and downs. And so I finally have this person here that, um, is one of those unconditionally supportive people. So being able to just oh, wow. last night and we were, we were doing some work cause she's going to start working on the magazine with us, but we also were just talking, um, and the value that we have found in each other to get us through, you know, the ups and downs of the week and, and just know that it doesn't really matter if we cancel on each other or if we show up or whatever, it's just always going to be there. So that's, that's been a recent acquisition of mine in my friend world. <laughs> I'm going to call her an acquisition. And it's been a long time coming. Hmm? It, and there's nothing more beautiful than a, a friend that loves you unconditionally and has your back, which honestly is a lot of why we started the Coterie for Women, because we are more isolated and we need a community of women that will come alongside of us and, and love us unconditionally and support us and have our backs. And Allison is that person for you right there locally. Thank goodness. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're that person uh, digitally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One day, maybe we'll meet in person. Um, so this has been a really good year for me in terms of relationships. And I think that, you know, partnering with you and it's such a cohesive, uh, you know, path that we've both been on that finally intersected at the right time in the right space. And then being able to find her and kind of bring her into some of the things that we're looking to do and and perspectives that are similar and goals that are aligned. And, and it feels like in that realm of my life, the stars have started to align. I've, I've met a lot of amazing women that I wish I could know better. Um, all, so many people that we've interviewed. Um, I talked oh, to Laura Spalding the other day and she and I just always have a good conversation and we were talking about books that we were reading. I mean, it's just, it's so gratifying when you feel filled up by the conversations that you're having. And I feel like I'm getting that. Oh, we have some great, I mean, Shane Evans, we just spoke mm -hmm. with Shane. Oh my goodness. I mean, is, isn't that someone you want to make into your best friend? I mean, absolutely. And, and so many of these women are falling in that category. So I'm hoping that they will become a bigger part of the coterie and, and do our facilitated conversations are coming up and how that's going to look and how we can engage more frequently with these women so that we develop those relationships. So I think on a, on a personal small circle level, I've, I've had a better year in terms of that, of building that. And then on a right. professional level, um, just expanding that feeling has been such a rose. Yeah. So okay. after thorn, all that, I don't want to ask what your my thorn is cars again. Um, we've had issue after issue after issue with cars. Cars. Part of the problem is we have too many kids who have cars, and then ours and so Donald's truck is out, and Jake's working on his car issue, and I mean I'm just really over it. So. Yeah. So over car problems and, you know, dependent children. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, the kids aren't always dependent. They do grow up. They're, they're getting, and but if you have to choose cars are getting cars there. and the kids, I'm going to suggest you choose kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, clearly, <laughs> but some days you just feel like it, when it rains, it pours, right? I mean, it's just one of those those seasons this last couple of months has just been like a pouring down of or maybe it's a hole but we keep sinking yeah. 
<laughs> I think a lot of people feel that way. It's like, what else? What? I don't have any more shoes I can drop. I mean, what else? Well, and that's the thing. And then you look at people who have lost people. A, a prominent woman in our community recently died of COVID. And she went in the hospital. She had been feeling poorly. Her husband had had it. I didn't know her, but everybody knew her. I'm not from here. So um, probably why I don't know her. But my, my husband knew of her. And she was an event venue owner and was just well known in the in the events world and went in the hospital finally one day and died the next and her husband had had it and had recovered he had been in ICU so you look at those situations and you think you know I, I choose the car problems yeah. <laughs> I have to choose at least my family at this point is healthy um right. so I have always tried to have perspective when I did disability work um that always every day I went into work I got perspective like I think that's everything in life and someone always has it worse or harder. Um, so I try not to let myself get too down in the dumps over the, the pit. <laughs> That's right. But every now and then I just want to say, okay, enough. Enough already. Go there. <laughs> yes. Hold off. I know I'm strong, but not that strong. Give me a break. Right. That's why I wrote, a, I wrote an article one time called, I should be granite by now. Because everybody always says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I'm like, I should be granite. <laughs> which my husband then in turn told me wasn't really the hardest stone no he's like diamonds. that's an inappropriate analogy diamonds he's like, are the hardest aren't they what is diamonds they're the hardest stone well then i should be a freaking diamond you should be a freaking diamond <laughs> <laughs> but you're right i think that's a year we probably all feel like we should be diamonds by now it's just been right. one thing after the other in one way or the other so onward what are you gonna do till next week yeah we'll see if the pit continues or we wrote we come up roses right <laughs> right all right so tune in we will see you next week welcome back to the podcast where passion and purpose collide we are here today with shane evans um shane is co-founder and ceo of massage heights uh that is a health and wellness company whose vision is to elevate lives. She has served as a CEO since January, 2019. Uh, Shane is the owner of several locations uh, and co-owner of the supply chain Summit Franchise Supply, co-owner of Gents Place, an ultra premium men's grooming franchise brand, and is on the board of directors for the Massage Heights Family Fund, a 501c3 crisis fund for team members in need. Uh, she's married to co-founder of Massage Heights, Wayne Evans, and they have three daughters. Shane, welcome to our podcast. Thank you, and thank you for having me. We're so excited we were able to snag you at least for a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> thank you. I know you're juggling a lot. In fact, that's kind of my first question for you, Shane, is you do juggle a lot as a, as a mama, as a co-founder of a business, of a 5013C, um, so, so tell me how you juggle being a mom and also running these businesses. Huh. Well, um, it's support, um, number one. Uh, you can't do that all by yourself, right? So um, I'd say number one support system is the great, great dad my kids have. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he is a phenomenal father, and we've been together 30 years, and, um, and he's a girl dad through and through, and those, those girls just love him. So that would be the number one thing. Um, Wayne picks up where I am not able. Um, we've got sort of a role reversal going, um, and uh, I'm very grateful for that because as much as I enjoy being at home and being with the kids, I also absolutely love what, what we do at Massage Heights and, and the other brands that we're involved in. So how does that, as, as a working mom, um, the juggle and the, we talk a lot on the Coterie about um, guilt and self-talk about how we as women feel about ourselves and about what we're doing. Um, and I think it's important to address that self-talk <laughs> in terms yeah. of what is okay with you might not be okay with someone else. Do you feel judged? How do you, do you have to justify it to yourself? Do you embrace it? How do you because my theory is I have learned, uh, I was a single mom for eight years before I remarried. One of the things I learned through, I had three boys at that time, was that they were proud of seeing me do things that I loved or that made us feel successful or, or mattered in the world. They, so I think there's a lesson that sometimes we don't give enough credence to yeah. in having our children, especially daughters, see a strong, successful mother in that way 
I don't think it takes away from parenting. So how do you balance all that in your own mind? Well, you're so right. I would say that um, it's gotten easier for me over the years. It used to be a lot more difficult. Um, it, when when I had Brady, our youngest daughter, who is now 14, we just launched the company um, nationally franchising. Um, at, and um, I kept her on my desk or on the conference table in a bouncy chair until she was about nine. Aww. I wanted to make sure I could nurse her and that I was with her. Um, but about that time, it got very, very difficult. She was, you know, trying to, to get around. And so we had to change that. But um, I, I would say it's gotten easier. And, and what, something that you just said is actually one thing that has resonated with me for a very long time. When my oldest went to college, um, I remember having this conversation with her saying, Casey, I am so sorry that I wasn't that mom that was just you know, at home when you got there. I didn't miss anything important. You know, my kids are have all been at very athletic and involved in a lot of different extracurricular things. I don't miss games, I don't miss tournaments, I don't miss those things, but it was the little things that I wasn't just there for. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I struggled with that for a very long time, but when she went off to college, I had that conversation with her and she said, mom, you, I am the way I am because of you. I will cry talking about this. I yeah. am the way I am because of you. <laughs> and I've seen you do what you do. And I want to be like you, you know, I want to be able to be Aww. that person. So, ah, so, you know, it's it, when, when, when it gets hard and you feel that guilt. Um, the other thing I would just say is, you know, trying to, trying to find presence in the times that you are together. Um, I have been a lot more deliberate about, mm -hmm when I am at home, you know, what kind of conversations are we having? What are we doing? Um, last night we went out for dinner. She picked the pizza place and we just had the funniest conversation. She's just this cute little 14 year old person that's growing mm -hmm. up, growing up into this beautiful, sweet young woman. And it's, it's, it's fun to just, you know, have those conversations. And so taking the opportunity to just try to be really present and I'm not perfect. Of course, you know, I get distracted too, but I think over time, um, you start to realize that when your kids turn out pretty good, um, you must have done something right, you know, so Absolutely. maybe I'm okay for doing what I'm doing. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it takes getting to those college years. We've got three in their 20s now, and my son called me after his first semester in college and said, thank you for making me uncomfortable my whole life with the conversations that we had and for challenging me because now I'm comfortable in every situation. And I was like, huh. That was one of those moments where you're like, thank God they got, they turned out okay. But I think that we put this pressure on ourselves and they're not necessarily seeing it that way. So I love the fact that you had that conversation with her and you were able to hear from her. What are you talking about? I, I, I like who I am because of the way that you raised me. Yeah. How validating is that? Right. Yeah, it is. I have to remind myself of that conversation over and over and over again when I start feeling, you know, guilty. And there, you know, there are times where I think, gosh, you know, my little one goes to a private Christian school and the moms are, a lot of the moms are up there all the time and very involved and they're wonderful families. And, you know, it's hilarious. I mean, they don't even text me anymore. My husband is on the group messages, right? For, can we do that? Can we go here? Can we do that? And I, you know, I, I'm so grateful that that is the way it is. And at the same time, I still sometimes go, uh, like I should be that person. And yeah. it's this constant struggle. Isn't it funny that the self-talk that we have as women, um, that we should be this perfect example of what a mom is and this perfect example of a business owner and a leader. And it's just impossible to, to meet our own standards sometimes. Not that the world has those standards of us or even our children have those standards of us. Uh, but it is a lot of self-talk that we do. It just is. yada, yada. I'm not perfect yet. Yeah. Well, my 18-year-old my son actually thanked me recently for not being the band mom. <laughs> there were some power struggles going on amongst the moms. And he was like, I'm so glad you're just a mother. <laughs> Mother, yeah, because oh, right. I've been feeling guilty all year for not, you know, for just being just in the parking for the band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny! But we all go, we all go through it. <laughs> so, but that you know, because we are juggling so many things anymore as women, and and you as a leader in the franchise space, 
what do you do for yourself? I've been kind of lurking and watching these wonderful retreats that you have been doing where you take time to self reflect and look at your purpose in life and your gifting in life and where you're going, both in business and, and personal. And I, as I'm watching you go to Cabo and, and then Sedona, two gorgeous places and wonderful places to be in nature and, and reflect, I wonder what that process is like for you and why you chose to do that. I, I'm envious. I want to do that. And part of me goes, what would happen if I just took X period of time and just focused on who I am and what I'm here for and my health and well-being? So can you address that for us? Ashane? Yeah, I, I will say one, um, quite a few years back, I started meditating pretty regularly. Um, and I, I noticed that it made such a big difference in the way that I addressed the day and how I handled things. And, you know, if I knew I had something important coming up, sometimes I would meditate in the car on the way to work. I would just put on a meditation, seven minutes and breathe. And it's amazing what we can do um, with our breath and how we can just slow our heart rate down and just clear mm -hmm. our heads. Um, so I, I didn't always take that kind of time. Of course, I mean, I founded Massage Heights. I get massages pretty regularly. I get them every day if I could, but I, you know, I mean, that is one of the ways that I've taken care of myself for, for many years at this point. But, um, the last two years, it just really a whole year. Last year I started the year out in Sedona. I went back to the place where actually I, the idea of massage heights was born and, in Sedona. And that was based on a kind of a crummy experience and just that spirituality and that feeling of just euphoria and uplifting that I, that I got in, in Sedona. And then, yes, I just recently came back from a, from a yoga retreat outside of Cabo San Lucas, a very kind of bohemian, um, simple little place that was, you know, no internet and all that. And we did yoga and meditation three times a day and journaled. And I think that that self, you know, introspection is, is so important to have the time to give you the headspace to get some clarity and to write those things down. How am I feeling? What do I like about myself? Is there, what do I love? One of the questions was, and it's so hard, write down two things that you love about yourself. And I, I had to sit there for a while, you know, and I, and I go, huh, would anybody else say the same thing or is just <laughs> me hoping that, you know, but, um, but I, I think that's really important and you don't have to go to a retreat to do it, but sometimes it takes going to a retreat forcing yourself to make that move mm -hmm. to get into some different habit that's going to get you into a different headspace. And I just know with Massage Heights, our brand is about elevating every day. We elevate the lives of the people we touch. For us at HQ, that's our franchisees. Our number one job is to help elevate them. Their job is to elevate their team members and those team members elevate our guests and members. And I know that as the CEO of the company, as the founder, I have to uphold our values. And if our purpose is to elevate every day, mm -hmm. then how do I show up is going to impact my team. And so I've got to be able to show up and be a positive light in, 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 you know, the days of the team that it franchising is hard. You're working with entrepreneurs. They mm -hmm. are willing to make that jump, right? They've made a big investment and it's not always perfect. And so our field support people, it's, that's a tough job. It's not always easy. And so I know that I've got to show up a different way for them. Um, if I want our culture to really be the culture that I set out for it to be instead of some unintentional thing that just happens. And, you know, so I've got to have a, a certain mindset. And, um, and again, I'm not always perfect. I don't do it all the time. I have good intentions, you know, and I try to start the morning every single day, at least with one meditation. And I often go to bed with a meditation as well. And um, I just, it makes a big difference for me, so. I, I just love this. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I had a piece of paper to be writing this down. Discover two things about you that you love. I mean, we can say that about others. Oh, I love this about uh, Elizabeth or this person or that person. We can quickly see their gifts, their talents, their specialness, but sometimes we forget to look at ourselves. And then the second point you made, which is, uh, as a leader, when you're stepping into that role, 
um, others are looking to you to be the light, right? I, in my business, we call it the head controls the body, right? And, and the way you come in then trickles to your team members and how they're looking at the business and uh, the excitement that they have for the future comes through your words and your inspiration and you showing up clear and focused on what, what it is, you're, where you're going with that business. So talking about your team themselves, what are some things that you do to, to inspire them, to inspire their focus and inspire their performance and commitment and to work and play as a team uh, going a particular direction? Yeah, I think, you know, for some of my team members, I actually have a third party that's doing some coaching with them. Um, and, uh, he's, he's great. He's been in our system as a partner for a very long time and, um, was a franchisee and, 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 and loves my team and, and that he's just, he's a life coach now. And so he's working with some of my team members. Um, you know, I, I try to, I think it's, it's hard for me to avoid any meeting without passion. So I hope Mm -hmm. that in most every every interaction that I have with my team from our Monday morning executive team meetings to one-on-ones or what have you, that that passion always shines through. Um, and again, I know I'm not, I know I'm not perfect and I get frustrated and all those things too, but I think that that is actually part of, you know, hopefully an appreciation that they have for me and being my authentic self. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard for me to show up any other way than who I am. Um, and, uh, you know, I do tend to be, um, I don't know, you could say it's emotional, but it's more, it's more about passion, right? I get so mm-hmm. passionate about what we're doing for our franchisees. You know, have we done enough? Are we doing enough? Could we have done that better? You know, and, um, and so I, that, that comes out, that fire comes out, you know, in, in our meetings. And so I, I think that I convey the vision on a pretty regular basis. I really try to incorporate our values um you know into the conversations and the meetings that we have we start all of our you know our system-wide calls with our franchisees with values Mm -hmm. and just kind of going over some examples of how somebody um you know portrayed those values and um so just trying to weave it into the everyday um is really how i do it i'd love to say oh i'm just a great coach and i sit down and i coach (laughs) people all the time um, we have one-on-ones, but they're, you know, where are we at? You know, those kinds of things and yeah. don't talk about anything. Yes. How are you doing? And you know, all of that. But, um, th- those are the things that I want to get better at as a leader though. I really like to get into a position where I'm less operationally focused and get into a role where I'm more coaching focused, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but it's, it's hard to play both. It's hard. It to is. I, yeah. I totally agree. It is, uh, difficult to play both because your your job is to pay attention to the bottom line and the systems and processes but a big part of that bottom line is the development of our people and you're right it's kind of hard to balance both of those what do I have to do to support and develop my people and to bring out of them their full uh, potential so it's like you almost have to be two different two different people it's, it's true. The one thing I would say is that because we're a family brand and I, I believe our values are really based on our family values, um, our team knows that. We've had a lot of people that have been with us for a very long time. And the reason that they have been is because they know that we love them. I mean, bottom line, you know, um, they are they are treated well and respected. And yes, the work is hard at times, but they know that we love them. Um, a lot of close relationships. And so... I, you know, I think, I think that's, that's evident. Um, and that yeah. makes a difference too. You know, in terms of being a, a female leader, wh- what role do you think showing vulnerability plays in that? Because I think that's another thing a lot of women struggle with. You, you put up a front, you walk in, you need to be all together all the time. Mm-hmm. If you're elevating women, you need to be elevated <laughs> and clearly we're not all, all the time. So what do you think is the value or the risk. I think there is some risk in showing mm-hmm. too much vulnerability. How do you how do you walk that line? Well, I think it's controlled emotion, right? You can be emotional and you can be authentic and you can be passionate, but it has to be controlled too. You have to be, I think, consistent mm-hmm. uh, in that. Um, so, um, yeah, that's that's a it's a really really hard thing. Um, I think it's harder for men maybe to be themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, I like I said, I have a hard hard time kind of hiding who I am. I just am. I am me. Um, but I but I've also learned to manage that over the years too, where I might have gotten too emotional. I'm I kind of know what my what my weaknesses are and what my blind spots are, and I kind of realize what I'm doing when I'm doing it. But but I think it's important to be authentic um, to who you mm -hmm. are and um, you know show because we do all have that to your point we and we 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 can we can um relate to someone that is not showing up perfect um you know that that might get a little emotional when they talk about their kids on a podcast or yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't, you know, where I mean, we, we can be tough women at work, but when you start talking about why you do what you do every day, I mean, for me, it's my kids and, you know, and, and so that's going to be an emotional subject and I'm not afraid to let people know that about me. So I think it's about stability in the professional realm, even when there is emotion, it's about having a level of stability in the way that you're delivering. Mm-hmm. I, I tend to agree. Um, it's, it's interesting because there's a direct correlation to that transparency and that vulnerability, Elizabeth, and you were just talking about, and people trusting. You know, when, when we are vulnerable and, and genuine and transparent, um, it gives people a whole picture of who we are, not just the businesswoman or not just this particular role and it creates greater trust and uh, greater credibility I think it's just so so important in life and in business um, and I think the tendency as you pointed out is we want to be perfect mm -hmm. and 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 meet certain standards that we have in our head so the tendency is to try to cover some of those vulnerable parts right to not show that we're really hurting here or confused there we try to kind of cover it up or even puff up sometimes uh, to come across as more confident than maybe we are or more prepared than we are or whatever it is and so I think it's beautiful Shane and maybe this is part of your own self-discovery that you're comfortable, you're comfortable being transparent and genuine and vulnerable and showing all parts of yourself, even right here <laughs> in this podcast with, with us. Well, it, oh. takes, it takes a lot of work because I've done the puffing up thing and all that too. Right. And I had an executive coach I've had for, for years and he, he said, you know, he said, ask for ask for help in tough situations and I think as a leader you always feel like you have to have the answers yeah you want to show up and be like oh no we're gonna do it this way or that way it's all good yeah you know and you just kind of direct meanwhile you don't always have all the answers so leverage the room you know leverage the brain power and ask questions and even show up and say you know I don't actually know the answer I don't I don't know what to do in this situation you know how, like what do you what do you what do you what are your thoughts and I think that is a hard thing especially for young leaders mm -hmm. um, because you do want to kind of prove um, that you're capable and all these things. And frankly, I, I, I used to have this conversation with a, a former team member of mine for quite some time. And it was the exact thing. I said, you, you remind me of me so much. Uh, and I can, you will be far more successful when you learn to, that you don't know everything and it's mm -hmm. okay to express that you don't know everything. And you can come to me and say, hey, I just don't know what to do here, you know, or you can go to anybody and say that. And that's where you grow. That's where you grow. And so I don't know. Again, this has been a, a time, a transition, a period yeah. of growth. You know, I mean, when we started this company, I was 34 years old. It's been 16 years. Um, that was pretty young to start franchising. Um, gotcha. And, um, you know, so I've grown a lot. Still have a lot of lot to go to. <laughs> I yeah, love it. I, I tell you what, it's a never ending. It's a never ending thing, and self reflection should never really stop. I'm I'm going through a similar thing. I'm I'm turning fifty in a couple of months, so I've been doing a little bit of the same thing, trying to 
reclaim some things and let go of some things and find the the next 50 years of my life <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. yeah it's it's yeah. kind of that time where I think that happens for a lot of us yes yes absolutely I, it is a time to reflect I'm way past that age so <laughs> call me if you want to know how to traverse the next 15 yeah. years. Okay? I, I may need to do that because the, the last couple have been like, whoa, like, is this what's happened? When what you just happened in my life? life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I, I have a question about YPO. I know you've been involved with a young professionals organization, YPO, for a while. Uh, can you talk about that, the benefits you get out, how, what, you, what you show up with when you go there? Sure. Uh, I've always been curious about it. it. It just seems to be such an incredible organization for leaders like yourself. Oh, it's an amazing organization. So YPO is um, Young President's Organization. It's a global organization. There's about 24,000 members, I think. And, um, you know, there's a there's a qualification criteria to to get in. It's based on sales volume as well as number of team members that you have and all of those things. And um, it's 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 an amazing organization. There's local chapters, you know, there's regional chapters and there's I mean, there's, there's chapters throughout the world. And so they do events that are global events that are incredible. I mean, you get the opportunity to meet people from all over the world that are doing unbelievable things for, for this amazing world that we live in. And you often get first glimpse into that. And so just the education around that is pretty awesome. Um, but where I've gotten the most value out of YPO is actually in my local chapter and specifically with my forum. So um, most YPO members end up in a forum of about eight people, and then you have your chapter, right? And so you have chapter events every month, but you also have your forum meetings every month, and they're four-hour meetings. And for my forum is a very holistic one, and YPO is pretty holistic. It really focuses on, you know, both the member as well as the spouse and the kids. And so it's, I like and appreciate that about that. And it's a, it is a organization of both hired guns, entrepreneurs and family legacy members. And so it's a, it's a nice mix instead of just all being entrepreneurial or all hired guns. Um, but the most benefit I've gotten from it is my actual forum because we have a very holistic forum that understands that, you know, our balance and our, our health, mental health and physical health really is um, influenced by Mm -hmm. business, family, self, you know, all of those things. And so, um, it's been an amazing experience to just learn from others. YPO, there's a rule in YPO, and that is just you don't you don't advise people. Um, it's really about experience sharing. And so in almost every situation, as far as off as it may be from anything else that you're dealing with, you always get some little nugget you know, um, through that process of, of experience sharing in those forum meetings. So it's invaluable. I have wonderful friends, people that I can trust. Um, it's very different than, you know, going home to my husband, who is also a founder and principal in the company who I don't want to talk to about business because I really don't want his feedback. Um, <laughs> when I get home, I'm like, there's a time and place. For <laughs> yeah. So it's great to be able to go to, you know, those, those, those forum mates and be able to have conversations and get, you know, insights for business, but also just for family life. Because again, you know, being in a family business, it's difficult. I mean, there Mm -hmm. you love my family, but it is difficult. And um, you can't necessarily talk to family about the challenges that you're having with them. I mean, you, you know, you can to some degree, but so it's just been, it's been a, an amazing part of my life the last, I think it's been six or seven years now, six, seven years. Yeah. So um, I really enjoyed it. I encourage anybody that can, you know, uh, do it, do it. It's, it's, uh, incredible experiences. This year, of course, has been a little wild because of, of COVID and, you know, wow. but. Wow. So Elizabeth, we're going to have to have Shane back to talk about this working with family. <laughs> thing, because it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. And you pointed out one of the challenges with it, if your challenge is with your family member who you adore and you love and you want to succeed, you can't always kind of brainstorm how to fix that problem right there. Sometimes a third party or a group of others is, is, is helpful. Um, so YPO has been helpful it, with, with that and of course a million other, other things. But I would love to have Shane back and maybe do some kind of panel discussion with her and others that are working with family and the franchise. That would be great because talk about self-talk, right? So when when you're in business with, 
family members uh, or a spouse who have known you for many, many years, they see you as a specific way, right? You yeah. were your little brother who did that thing that was dumb or right. Or that your sister was very emotional or that whatever. And so it's, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, the people that you know from back, your siblings, you re, they are a certain way to you, even though they've grown. And so yeah. it's, uh, you, then you start going, well, you know, what are they saying about me? So anyways, yes, we could have a whole. Oh, discussion. my gosh. You're yeah. just speaking We're my language. Recently, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I recently hired my um, grandson in law. And of course, he has seen me as a grandma and as a mama and all of those kinds of things that didn't know nothing about the business. And he's been on the phone calling uh, many of our clients who are just raving about our company's Oracle profiles and the tool and Rebecca Monet. And he's been sitting in on this thing. And, and all of a sudden he's going, I had no idea you were a genius. <laughs> wow, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? I can't believe how people talk about it because he sees me as his grandma on the floor with the babies, right? He doesn't yeah. see me as a business and, and the same way here, you know, it's it's so important to have <laughs> the YPOs and the, the coaches and the friends that see you outside of that family environment, especially when you're there. Elizabeth, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just <laughs> Oh, no, no. <laughs> I was just saying, we, we're a family of pigeonholers. So once you've been pigeonholed as whatever, who, however you're identified, it follows you for 50 years, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, we have, uh, my my son and his boyfriend are working for us on the coterie. So we're, we're, we're in the same boat with lots of different dynamics. And ours are young. When you were talking about um, working with young people as leaders and wanting to prove, I mean, there's some of that with young 20-something boys. And how do we call that, but also encourage them to grow and push and expand. You know, it's just, it, it could go on forever, this kind of conversation, because there's so much more invested in it. Okay. In that We're going to have Shane back. But in the yes. meantime, I have one more question if we have time, Elizabeth. Yes. Yay. Yay. Okay. Thank you for making time. I'm so excited. All right. So tell me about your 501c3, this family fund that you have for your team members. I, I want to learn everything about that and hopefully others will listen and emulate what you're doing. Yeah. So, I mean, again, Massage Heights is a family owned and operated brand. We have family values. Family takes care of one another. We don't always get along, but we always <laughs> love on one another. We take care of one another, right? Um, and it's no different for the team members across our franchise system. So we developed um, the Heights Family Fund as a way to take care of team members in need in a crisis. So it could be a medical crisis, a financial crisis, something that a financial crisis that was caused by something out of the ordinary. Um, so we we have um, many of our franchisees contribute to it. Many of the team members contribute to it. Just you know, a, a dollar a paycheck, and so growing that and. Um, you know, we get quite a few requests uh, during um, one of the hurricanes in Houston a couple years ago. I think we we gave 50 grants out and there were a lot of people that were affected by those floods and, you know, lost their homes and cars and all those things. But we've also given um, we had mama that lost a child. We had, you know, um, a therapist that had heart surgery. We had, you know, just different things. Um, and so we do it to 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 really help you know, the team members of our franchisees understand that they really are part of something bigger, that there is a family that's here for them when they need it. They don't have to contribute to it to get anything from it. Um, their franchisee just has to ask, uh, you know, for what is needed. And then of course we have an approval process with the board, but um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. My mom actually runs the Heights Family Fund. Um, uh, we started it back when I was on Undercover Boss. We had a, 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 one of the team members that I worked with um, had lost his sister to uh, someone, someone shot her and she had two children and he had taken on these two children. And um, I really wanted to help him with those kids. And so we, we had been talking about starting the Heights Family Fund for a while. That was the sort of inspiration that finally got it started. And we've just been able to hire, we've, we've helped, I don't even know how many people, hundreds and hundreds of people at this point. So um, that's, it's been amazing. And it's a, it's a, it's a big passion for my mom as well. And um, she's, she's a very good representative of the, of the family fund. So 
beautiful. It, it just shows you living your values. And I think when people see you doing that, whether it's your team or your franchisees or potential franchisees or even customers, when you see someone walk the walk and talk the talk, you know, then your sincerity really shines through. I think that's so critical and probably why your culture has been so successful is because you're, you're living those family values out loud. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, we've got a lot of great franchise partners and, you know, we, we recruit our franchisees based on value alignment. And I think it's very evident when candidates come through the process of who we are as a family brand and, um, you know, how we're going to deal with things when, when there are challenges. And so having those great franchisees um, really emulate that culture at that local level is, is amazing. And of course we can always do more, but um, we continue to, to work on that and try to educate people on the fund and, um, make sure that, you know, people know that it's there for them if they ever need it. So we, we enjoy doing that. It's a nice, nice way to give back. And, you know, again, our franchisees give every year as well. So they're, they're a big part of why we're able to do that. We facilitate it, but they're, they're big givers. So. I love this. I hate for this conversation to be over. <laughs> um, so if anyone that's listening to our conversation today is interested in Massage Heights, you feel like you have a values alignment with what Shane and family and team uh, have going, how would they get hold of you? Or if they wanted to learn about Jen's place, how would they get hold of you, Shane? Sure. I, I'll just give my email address out. I think that's the easiest way. It's sevans at massageheightsfranchising.com. And then if you just go to our website, massageheights.com, there is a link to our career site if you're interested in a career. And if you're interested in franchising, there's a link to the franchising site. And of course, all the others, you know, LinkedIn and Instagram and all those things. But I would just say email is the best way to get in touch with me personally. Excellent. Shane, thank you so much for sharing your heart and your vision. Um, I learned a ton. And I think others have also learned and been inspired by your story. So we appreciate your transparency and uh, taking the time with us. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed it. It was a nice, nice conversation. And you guys were you made it very easy, easy to talk about being a mom and all those good things. I'm sure it's we're all, we can all relate. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks again, Shane. What do you think is the number one challenge for franchisors? You got it, getting the right fit franchisee. And as you know, poor fit franchisees are often poor performers. Poor fit franchisees cost more to train and support. Poor fit franchisees are rarely satisfied or compliant, which can lead to validation issues. Not a good place to be. But now there is a solution. Zorical Profiles Scientific Spot-On Match Program. Working with top broker groups in franchising, Zorical has created a platform that scientifically matches the broker's candidate to the right fit franchise brand. Spot on Match predicts the compatibility, performance, and viability of a prospective franchisee. Spot on Match gives the franchise development team a data-driven and scientific approach to selling franchises. This is how it works. Zorical works with each franchisor to establish their top performer blueprint. This research assesses current franchisees to determine the key psychographic indicators that separate high performers from mid to low performing franchisees. The final result of the research is the brand's Eclipse Report, which compares prospective franchisees to a franchise system's high performers. Finally, brokers are running a spot-on profile on each of their franchise prospects. These profiles are then scientifically bumped up against the franchisor's high performer algorithms, and the match process begins. Dashboards are built for the franchisor and the broker to make sure the process is smooth and trackable. RightFit matches instantly. Find out how you can be a spot-on match member. Save time. Stop guessing. Start matching. Call Zorical Profiles. Welcome to Women in the Know, where we discuss everything from politics and policy to relationships and marketing. We take the knowledge we have gained through our experience and our interviews, and we share it with you in the hopes that we will all learn a little something new. 
So Rebecca, today we wanted to talk about we wanted to talk about <laughs> Shane Evans. <laughs> we were so mesmerized with. So I'm taking notes, you're taking notes. And uh, she had so many wonderful things. But the one thing that she brought up that is particularly fascinating is the 501 uh, C3 that she has, where she has this fund that helps. She calls it a family fund, the mm, Massage Heights yeah, Family I Fund. I have that, the Massage Heights Family Fund, yes. Yeah, but really it's about more than just a family. It's She sees her team, her franchisees as um, part of the family. Mm -hmm. But the, I thought this whole idea of having a fund like that where folks are able to uh, commit a certain amount of money each year or however she's doing it. And that ends up being like a slush fund that when someone has a need, they can come and ask for help. And this slush fund then uh, helps those folks. So I thought it was a brilliant idea. It is. And I've seen some other uh, companies doing that. Not, not all franchising companies, but other large companies across the country have started with, with as many natural disasters as we're having, ah. um, they're starting to, and geographically, companies that are spread across the country, you've got Cal California wildfires, you've got hurricanes in the Gulf, you've got snowstorms, you've got floods, <laughs> you've got a pandemic. Um, so I know when, when people get hurt within a company that has got a culture like a family, the company wants to help the, the co-workers want to be able to help and they might not be able to just hand over a lump sum on a rainy day unless they've prepared ahead of time which sounds like what she's doing everybody can contribute or not you can request money from the fund in an emergency whether you've contributed or not um, it's genuinely an altruistic thing to take care of that family as a company which is just a, such an admirable quality to have in a business I think we're going to have to have her come and talk more about how she set that up. Mm -hmm. uh, I know her mom is running that part of the business and is very proud to to run it and help uh, these folks. But I know for the, the Coterie for Women, it's something you and I talked about from day one. We wanted a way to have funds to help women in need. And obviously need is different for one person than another, whether it's to start a business or a car breaks down or there's a medical expense or some other kind of emergency. And we all have those kinds of things. I would like to see more franchisors, more people in general do exactly what Shane Evans is doing. Absolutely, I, I agree and I think that it's not that difficult. It's a voluntary thing. So it's not like you're requiring anything of anyone, mm -hmm. but for people at, you know, at every level, the one company I'm thinking of that I know of around here does it, you can do $5 a paycheck. Right. You know, if you have 800 employees, that adds up quickly. Adds and if, up. if you're an executive, you could do hundred dollars a paycheck, you know, or more. So you, you, those things build up rather quickly. If everybody's, it, it takes just a little tiny bit for everybody to pitch in to really make a difference in someone's lives when they're going through. And just think how good struggle. you feel. Mm -hmm. Just think how good you feel when you have a fellow uh, employee or franchisee or, or whatever, who's gone through a crisis, knowing some of your own money is now helping that person through that crisis. I mean, no matter how you look at that, it's got to make others feel fabulous to be able to help that they themselves individually like you pointed out couldn't solve that problem but collectively all of us franchisees all of us employees collectively each giving something on a regular basis allows us to help someone that we care about and that's part of our extended family in this case with massage heights exactly and you know one of the things we've talked about with the coterie is is having that kind of a, a program yeah. But also having a scholarship program or something where we have collected um, and, and people can donate to that arm of it to eventually maybe support someone with a, some sort of, sort of education or to help someone pay uh, an entry level into a, an entry point to a franchise system so that they can be a business owner or so, you know, there are so many ways you could, that uh, what seemingly is not that much money is a lot to someone who needs it. <laughs> Right. and to be able to change their lives. So, I mean, these are things that um, 
as we move forward with the Coterie and we gain more and more membership, we wanna make sure that we offer those opportunities to all of us as a collective group of women to, to try and make differences in people's lives, not just through community, but through community support and financial resources. Yeah, yeah. I already feel better. Yeah. Just thinking about it's, it. It's it right now. Ours is just a little seedling dream. Yeah, <laughs> ours is a little seedling. We're putting it out there. So. And we're going to emulate what Chain Evans is doing, and I'm sure other franchisors are doing. If you are doing something like this, and you're a franchisor, reach out to us. We want want to learn what you're up to. And, and uh, have you talk about those kinds of things to our audience of women who are truly committed to supporting one another. So woo, this is so exciting. It is. Yeah, we, we I genuinely do want to hear. We want to be able to share with people the best way to set that up, um, what works, what doesn't work, what's, what's too lofty to start, what's not. And, you know, interestingly, most of these companies who are doing this have started with some some incident that has spurred them on to action yeah yeah uh, usually there's someone in great need that they think oh why haven't we done this already and then that starts the program so if you've had something like that that has inspired you to do it that's a great story to share too because it helps other people understand what that looks like and what it means to a family so be sure to share for sure in the comments and we'll reach out absolutely well now that we solved all the world's problems to next week other great ideas coming your way in Women in the Know. The Franchise Woman is a bi-monthly digital magazine that empowers women as they navigate the franchising industry by providing relevant news, tools, advice, and inspiration. We are a resource for women who are seeking to own their own businesses, improve their existing businesses, find creative solutions, and take advantage of franchise opportunities. We feature women in the business who best exemplify our ideals and have something to teach our readers. In addition to our exclusive articles relating to the female entrepreneur, we also feature brands that are geared for women. Women have become the fastest growing sector in business ownership and have become a powerful, influenceable force fueling the economy. The Franchise Women will give you the news that is relevant to you to help you navigate the path of successful franchise ownership. By women, for women, and about women, we are the Franchise Women. Join us today at www.thefranchisewoman.com. Welcome to Ask Beck and Liz, where no topic is off limits. We wanna answer your questions about business, life, and everything in between. Send your questions to ask at beckandliz.com. That is ask at beckandliz.com. So I actually have a question. Okay. And this came up in our conversation with uh, Shane Evans, um, the co-founder of Massage Heights. And she said something about uh, stopping and pondering and reflecting on who we are and asking ourselves, what are the two things we love about ourselves? So on the spot, Elizabeth, what are the two things you love about yourself? <laughs> Nothing like being put on the spot with a question like oh, that. Right? Or, that's probably got to be the question most women would hate to be asked the most. So before you put me on the spot, I'm going to put our audience on the spot and say, you guys need to fill it in on the comments and help us out here and, and get on the team so that we're not floundering alone in this. I think you're uh, buying time. I am. You're buying probably. time. So <laughs> hoping your brain will kick in something. I think I love this about me. <laughs> <laughs> I love my ability, as my husband would say, to deflect. No. <laughs> deflect. Donald, Donald calls killer. me the queen That's deflector. Killer, right? Yeah. It's like, you're always the queen of deflecting. I'm like, wow. Yes. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think if I was forced to answer the question, I would say one thing I am proud of about myself is that I stand up for what I believe in, no matter the cost. And it has cost us a lot different times. Um, sticking to what we believe and being able to say it out loud. Um, so I think that's something, and I try not to do it in a mean way, but um, in a way that explains why we feel the way we do about certain things and, and why it matters. Yeah, I think that's one thing. And I hope that through doing that, we are able to encourage that in others through the coterie to have those honest, open, direct 
discussions, which is something that I really value and others also. Yeah. And I think if I had to say the second thing, I'm really good at talking to my kids about their issues and what they need and what they want and helping them. When you have a blended family, you can't always say exactly what you think because there are other parents involved and you have to be sensitive to them and to how your children feel about them, even if you don't agree. And so I think I've gotten very diplomatic at saying, the Socratic method works great with me (laughs) in terms of asking them, what is it they think and what is it they want? And if they want this, then what are the steps they're going to have to do to take that and helping them navigate through what they think and then being able to articulate it. You know, I always talk about voice. So finding the voice that they need to use Mm -hmm. to get what they want and then to put that in action. So I think that's one of the things I'm better at, almost better with them than I am with myself. And you love that part of me, a part of yourself. Yeah, I think I do because I think they respect it and I think it helps them learn to solve their own problems. Yeah. I've so. seen that part of you in action. Actually, I've seen both parts of that, <laughs> of you. The one that is very clear on your opinions um, and unafraid to speak mm-hmm. up. And then this uh, parenting style that you have where you're able to talk with your children, even about very difficult topics and get them to think through things I've seen both sides of you in that so I, I I love those parts about you too well thank you now your turn since I was oh, fine time now um <laughs> no deflecting from you I already tried it uh, oh my gosh um I guess one of the things I love about myself is my crazy curiosity hmm I am endlessly curious about what makes people do what they do. I'm like, you are an analyzer. You do try to figure it out. (laughs) I want to know how these two dots came together. I mean, Mm -hmm. that just seems kind of interesting and fascinating. Not so much of what history they had that caused it, but their thought process And then if it's getting the results that they want, especially in business. So I'm endlessly curious about the person, uh, how they think, how they feel, uh, and ultimately how all of that comes together that's causing their actions and their behaviors and ultimately the results, good, bad, or indifferent that they're having. So it's just, um, so I like my curiosity. I, I like that too. It makes for fun conversation. <laughs> it does. What about this? And how about that? Have you thought about the other? Yeah. I mean, and why? Why are you doing that? Why? And genuinely wanting to know, but not being critical. No. Right. No, just interested. Just really, really interested. So number two. Uh, um, um, so I don't have a second one. You have to. Okay, I have to. Um, I was going to say, this is one thing I, you, you kind of hit on it just, just a minute ago, is my ability to love unconditionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that doesn't mean I agree or approve or any of those things, but it's my capacity to love with reckless abandon, just to, to love unconditionally. Um, and, and it has no, you know, critique or judgment or whatever to it. Um, and I think it's something I've heard frequently where people say, I just feel totally accepted by you. I feel totally loved by you. Even if I have completely different agree- uh, beliefs from someone else, I want them to know from the bottom of my heart that they are loved, they are accepted exactly like they are. Um, And of course, I'm gonna be curious how they became what they are. (laughs) (laughs) You are, and I I think that's true too. And here's here's one of the ways I think you demonstrate that is when it's actually both of those qualities kind of combined. When someone is talking and they, they come upon something with, with a deeper meaning or something that needs to be discussed further, you don't let them gloss over it. We, I, you've, I've done it. When I, I was upset one day on an accountability call and you, you said, wait, we're going to stop and talk about that. But, like I was going on. 
with whatever it was I was saying. And you're like, no, we need to address that. And we need to figure out what's going on that's making you feel that way. And I think that that action in those moments, and I've seen you do it with other people too, makes people feel loved unconditionally and makes people feel important because you're not willing to gloss over the hard conversation. And I don't always want to have that that conversation. You know, in that moment, sometimes when you're trying not to be upset and to stop and have someone say, wait a second, <laughs> and then, you, then you're sunk, you can't be, yeah. you know, completely with it, but it needs to be done. And it's a, it's a way of loving someone and letting them know that it's okay, that, they're, that there's something broken right that second that we need to talk about and look at and analyze and how can we make it better. I mean, so that to me is a demonstration that action demonstrates those two qualities really, really well. Thank you for, for pointing that out. It's, it's interesting because that observer curious side of me also has me have really intense sensory acuity. I can tell when an emotion or a thought is coming up by simple little movements in their cheeks or in their eyes or the voice just changing just a little bit or the breathing changing a little bit. I know something is coming up. And if it's a safe space, I will address it. If it's not safe, then I'm gonna step back and try to create safety Mm -hmm. uh, for them so they can bring it up. Because there's a reason that that thought or that emotion bubbles up and I've been gifted with someone feeling vulnerable enough to share it Mm -hmm. it really is a gift it is and I think you and I have a similar quality in that people tell us things they might not tell other people and I think it's because of that lack of judgment and that willingness to accept whatever it is um and I think that's why the coterie is is going so well and we've had so many tears on happy hour of all things um, but they're good to, <laughs> well, and I think, I think they're the, last week, somebody was touched and that's why they had tears and it was a good sort of tears. So I think that building that kind of intimacy, you have to feel seen to build that. And I think that that's how I felt when you said that to me, and you didn't let me go on and gloss over it. You feel so, seen, so you feel heard and you feel like it matters that you matter, mm-hmm. you are significant. Yeah. You and what you're going through is important to me. Just like that girl you were talking about before, this first time there and she burst out in tears. She goes, I, I, I feel embraced. I feel loved. I feel part of the community. I feel like I'm be- I can be myself. And, and we don't oftentimes be get, uh, are offered that in other mm-hmm. scenarios. And I think you and I are both good at that. And it's obviously what we want to spread through the coterie uh, too, so others can feel completely loved. And uh, maybe we not, may not understand you, but we're going to love you anyway. <laughs> exactly. And we're going to ask you so that we're we can ask, understand you better. <laughs> and then Elizabeth is going to have the tough conversations. With you. <laughs> It'll be good cop, bad cop, right? There you go. <laughs> but all with love. Yeah, we're always loved, right? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships are forged. This is Beck and Liz signing off and wishing you another purpose-filled and profitable week. <laughs>